What's going on YouTube? My name is Zach with Android Digest and today I want to talk about the state of Chrome OS and specifically the state of Chrome OS on tablets. I want to talk about the things that I know they really need to improve on tablets but also I want to talk about the good things and how far Chrome OS has come. So let's get straight into it. Chrome OS tablets, again, a lot of you remember the Google Pixel Slate and a lot of reviewers just bashed it to pieces and said how awful it was. And that was really at the early stages of Chrome OS on tablets. The animations were really buggy. There were all types of issues that everyone had with it. And ever since then, we've seen a lot of people and a lot of tech YouTubers just abandon Chrome OS on tablets. Remember, a lot of YouTubers, they're only going to talk about the latest and greatest devices. So when a company like Google makes a Chrome OS tablet, they were paying attention. But outside of that, when Lenovo and other companies started making tablets, they really backed off a lot of YouTubers did. And in the end, we're just not seeing a lot of people talking about these tablets in the Chrome OS world. But Chrome OS has really come a long ways since the Google Pixel Slate. Now we haven't seen a lot of devices with the power of the Pixel Slate in a tablet form factor, but we have seen the overall operating system improve quite a bit. And I was one of those people who was very frustrated when I would get a Chrome OS tablet, I would get it set up, all my apps would download, but the problem is they would download in a very wonky way and my apps would not be alphabetized. That was one of the big issues with Chrome OS. They couldn't sort your apps or alphabetize them or anything like that. And another issue they had of course was that they didn't have a lot of connections to Android phones. When you see iPads out there they have a lot of connections of course with iPhones but when you saw Chrome OS tablets they didn't have a lot of connections to other tablets or other phones in the Android ecosystem. Well now we have this really cool phone hub that's out there and this phone hub will actually connect to your phone. It will actually show your notifications that come in from your Android phone. You could also use your hotspot without having to pull out your Android phone. Now Sometimes, depending on your carrier, you may have to click on your phone and approve a message that comes up. But the fact that you could turn on your hotspot from your Chrome OS tablet, that's a really big deal. It means that if you're out on the go, instead of having to buy a cellular plan with your tablet, you could actually just use your tablet, turn on your hotspot straight from your phone, and it should automatically turn on and you will be ready to work on the go. Another improvement with Chrome OS tablets that's been very impressive is the productivity launcher. And now you can actually alphabetize your apps. That was something you couldn't do before. Now you may have to go to the flag section of Chrome OS. I know it's not automatically turned on. Some of these features aren't turned on for every single Chrome OS device yet, but you can actually turn a lot of these features on like that productivity launcher. You can turn on the fact that you could alphabetize your apps and those things are a really big deal. Chrome OS looks a lot more modern now. It actually works with all these navigation gestures. These gestures are very, very smooth. So overall, I love the state of Chrome OS. I love the state that it's going in. And now we have a lot of great Chrome OS tablets that are out there that are actually a very good value. And I really wish Android tablets would come along to this party because you see all these Chrome OS tablets that come with kickstands. They come with keyboards and you're finding these tablets around $300. And when you look at the Android space around $300, or $400. You just don't see a lot of tablets out there that come with kickstands or keyboards. And in fact, I can't think of any tablets at that price point in the Android world that come with these extra accessories. And honestly, these Chrome OS tablets, they have a lot of advantages over other Android tablets. They do run a full desktop version of Google Chrome. These tablets can run full web extensions. Now, a lot of you don't care about that, but for some of you, that's going to be a really big deal. There are a lot of websites, for example, that if I pull them up on my Android Android phone or my Android tablet. And even if I turn on that desktop mode that's in Google Chrome, it still won't make a difference on my phone. There are some websites that just won't load very well. But when you have a Chrome OS tablet, you have a full Chrome desktop. And that does help you again to get a little more productivity done. There are a lot of tablets out there with these awesome detachable keyboards. There are a lot of tablets out there that have these really cool kickstands on the back. And there are these magnetic cases that are coming with these Chrome OS tablets. They work really well. So whether it's the Asus CM3 or the Lenovo Chromebook Duet, there are all types of devices competing against each other in this space. We have three different versions of the Lenovo Chromebook Duet. We have the HP Chromebook X2, we have the Asus CM3, 
All of these devices come with detachable keyboards. They all come with kickstands. So again, the competition is there in Chrome OS world. And another benefit that Chrome OS has over Android tablets is the updates. A lot of Android tablets only get one or two years of software updates. And at that point, you're using a device that could be a security risk. But on Chrome OS, you can get eight years of software support. Now, sure, there are a lot of Galaxy tabs out there, a lot of Samsung tablets that do have four years of software support and bravo to Samsung for that. But again, there are some great advantages that I see with Chrome OS over Android tablets and the fact that it can run that full desktop version of Chrome while still running a lot of these Android apps. That's a big deal. Another advantage that it has is if you go to a website, you could create a web shortcut and that web shortcut will automatically go to your apps. If I create a web shortcut on Android, I could put it on my home screen, but it actually won't go to my apps. Just a minor advantage to Chrome OS. But despite all of these things, Chrome OS still has some bugs and some issues. For one, we still have not seen a lot of premium Chrome OS tablets. So ever since the Google Pixel Slate, we just haven't had a lot of tablets with these really nice processors. I wish we would see a tablet with a i3 or an i5 or an i7 processor, but that just hasn't been the case with Chrome OS. We just haven't seen that yet. Most of the tablets we're seeing are ARM based and those are a little bit slower. They're very good for battery life, but a lot of us want to get some very good work done. We might want a Surface Pro type of laptop on Chrome OS, and a lot of us want a high refresh rate screen. So if you think of something like the Tab S8 or the Tab S8 Plus or the S8 Ultra, you have a lot of high refresh rate screens and the screen when it refreshes really fast, that's a really big deal. Whether you're gaming or whether you're just scrolling on the news, it's a really excellent thing to see. And a lot of us want to see great and amazing screens. We want to see 2K screens on Chrome OS tablets. But for the most part, we are just left with 1080p screens with average or decent brightness, but we haven't really seen those excellent OLED displays. And one of the reasons for that is honestly, Chrome OS has not supported high refresh rates in the past, but they have fixed that. And now Chrome OS does support high refresh rates. So we should see a lot of devices, hopefully coming in the next year or two that do support a lot of these features. Another thing we're seeing is software bugs. And what is eight years of software support good for if your tablet is full of bugs? Now, most of these bugs are minor. A lot of them honestly are just keyboard related. If I go to Chrome OS and let's say I'm on a tablet and I go to twitter.com, if I go to comment on a tweet and I press this space bar, if I'm commenting, I say a few words, every time I press space, the keyboard will blink or nearly every single time I press the space bar, the keyboard will blink. Now, just about a year ago, it was having a weird issue where it was actually mushing words together. It was deleting words. There was all types of weird issues on places like Twitter and Reddit. Well, recently they did fix a lot of that, but still we do have a blinking keyboard and that's a problem. And another issue we have is with gestures. If I do try to use that swiping, if I try to swipe and type in that way and use those different gestures to type out the words, well, I I will have an issue with that because I'm someone who likes to turn off autocorrect. I really hate the autocorrect feature, but if I do turn that off, for whatever reason, my glide typing or my swiping or whatever you want to call it, that no longer works on the keyboard. Another odd glitch that I've noticed is with Gboard. So you can enable Gboard. A lot of you love Gboard. You've used it on Android phones or tablets. Well, they have officially allowed you to enable Gboard on your Chrome OS tablets. But when I use it to type specifically specifically in a web address bar, it will randomly mush things together. It will randomly add words that I didn't mean to add. It will do that just by doing some basic typing. It's basically auto completing things that I did not want to auto complete all types of weird stuff. And again, those are glitches when you're using an Android keyboard on Chrome OS. So there's still some kinks that need to be worked out between Chrome OS and Android. Both of these worlds, of course, operate in Android tablets. And the thing that's most frustrating about these things is the fact that a lot of these issues have been here for several years. Some of these issues are so basic and you would just think that over one or two years they would be able to fix a lot of these bugs but they just haven't even thought about it apparently or if they have there's some serious issues that just don't allow them to fix these things at least as of yet.
So would I recommend a Chrome OS tablet today? I would still say yes. If you're someone out there who's looking for a tablet around $300, if you're someone who's looking to save some money, and if you're someone out there who wants to get some productive work done, maybe you do want to type on a keyboard, you want a good keyboard to come with it, you want a nice kickstand, but you also want to be able to detach it and actually use the tablet in tablet mode. There are so many great Chrome OS tablets out there that are often on sale, anywhere between $200 and $400. So I would highly recommend that you check out a lot of these Chrome OS tablets. Again, eight years of software support, full web extensions, you get a full desktop version of Chrome, and you could still use Android apps. You can now alphabetize your apps. The gestures are a lot smoother than they used to be. But the one thing that I really want to see is more power and I want to see more bug fixes. And hopefully those things are just on the horizon. If you have any thoughts about the state of Chrome OS, feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you have any thoughts on these tablets that are out there, feel free to leave a comment as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Again, feel free to give a like and give a sub to my channel. Check out some affiliate links. I will put them in the description so you can check out other tablets that are out there. Maybe you'll like one. Maybe you'll see a good sale there. Also leave a comment and watch some other videos if you get a little more time. So thank you so much. I hope you have a great day and I hope you enjoy your week.